What's up dudes? Welcome to uh, Nexus Core, and I have for you a standard Pale Moon deck profile. So, I see a lot of people running just straightforward all the new Silverthorn stuff. And I got my ass handed to me at Locals because when I did that because damage denial is very strong against Pale Moon because if you just go, alright, call a board out with Lutier, which is Counter Blast 2, drop a card, and then Dorian sucks it all back in, and then they just don't attack on the following turn. This is especially bad against Force, because they can use Force 2 to fuck with you. So I did something a little different, and I'm gonna, I call this build Make New Friends But Keep the Old, uh, because one is silver and the other is gold. All right. Starting off with your threes, already looks weird, doesn't it? Uh, you have four copies of Golden Beast Tamer. So, Golden Beast Tamer skill was if you have five or more units, your front row gets plus 3k. This means that if you have, you know, a grade three in front of a grade one, that column is now hitting 23, which is hitting numbers on force. Uh, it also means that your grade twos now hit 12k, which hits numbers on Excel and Protect. And then her other skills, when she attacks, you can counter blast one, put a card from hand to soul, and then call two cards from soul to rear. So, this allows you to uh, work with less damage because of the next card, which is four copies of Lucier, which is uh, if you call two or more cards from soul this turn, uh, she gets plus 10k on Vanna rear, so she's 22. And then her other skills on Van, you can once per turn counter blast two, discard a card. And then call any number of silver thorns from soul to rear. And then uh, after you do that, your front row gets plus 3k. Or front row rear guards get plus 3k. So she's not hitting numbers on her own against force. But the reason I have the, both of these at the same time, and I'm not doing four Dorian, is because Golden Beast Tamer allows you to A, work uh, with less resources in that you can. You know, if you have less Excel circles, the Counter Blast 2 discard a card to call three things doesn't feel as good as if you have two or three Excel circles. So, Lukier is A, if you're behind, like they rushed you really hard, and then now you can just <laughs> fill out your board immediately. Uh, it's if it's later in the game and you have, you know, if you were good about your Counter Blast, you can then use it to kill the opponent outright by just <laughs> onto your board. But Golden Beast Tamer allows you uh, to capture that crucial mid game where uh, you haven't really gotten enough resources to make a like that good of an offense. It allows you to kind of keep it up against things like Force. Uh, and also, like I said, work with less damage. You have one copy of Dorian on the right there. Uh, her skill is at the end phase on Vanna Rear. You can pull all of your rear guards into your soul. Or all your other rear guards, so you, it's not her. She's on rear. You draw one card for every two cards you put into soul. And then if she's on rear, you retire her. So that's why it's going to be the mass majority of the time. The reason I run her at 1 is that you can search literally anything in this deck with the grade 2. So, yeah, you're mostly just going to use her as a one-off as a way to uh, recoup cards back if you're behind. You don't really need to keep doing that, though, which is why I cut her. I, I had her at 3, then 2, and now we're at 1, and it works out fine. So uh, that's what I have to say about that. And then lastly, one copy of Comicality Chimera, who... On rear, when he attacks, uh, you can soul blast one, pull a card from rear guard into soul, and then he gets plus 5k for the battle. And then if you didn't counter charge that turn, counter charge one, which that literally always happens because there's no way to counter charge in battle phase with Pale Moon. So uh, that's really good to keep your offense up. And you don't really need it otherwise. Uh, I also tried to do... Um, I tried to fit in Miracle Pop Ava because it, her still of drawing a card and soul charging when she's called out makes Golden Beast Tamer still effectively free, but it just didn't end up working out that way. So this is my grade 3 lineup, love it or leave it. Alright, now for the grade 2s. You have four copies of uh, Silverthorn uh, Marionette Lillian. It's grade 2 on the far left there. She's, uh, when she's placed on Van or Rear from hand, you can Counter Blast one and search your deck for a card with Silverthorn and put it in Soul. And shuffle. And then her other still is, uh, when she attacks a Vanguard, if you have four or more cards in Soul with, uh, different names and Silverthorn in them, she gets plus 10k for the battle. 
So this is, again, one of those cards that allows your early game and your mid game to sustain because she continues to be a 19k beater after you fulfill the requirement. You don't have to continuously call things out for it to be worth it. Um, then you have three copies of Rising Dragon, who if you called two or more cards from Soul this turn, he gets plus 10k. Uh, that doesn't need a Silverthorn Vanguard, which means you can call it out with... Uh, you know, Golden Beast Tamer and be fine. Um, these two form the backbone of your uh, offense most of the time in that they are constantly being 19 to 22k beaters, uh, which is super good against Excel and Protect, and we're in an Excel meta, so works out good. You have two copies of Endive Beast Tamer, so this is a great two. I see a lot of builds running this, uh, and yeah, I'm inclined to agree. So her still is you counterblast one, rest her. And then you call two cards to the same column. Like, you pick a column and call two cards there. Uh, this is mostly used to deal with damage denial in the other build. I mostly use it to, uh... Like, if, if I'm on Beast Tamer, and I have the Counter Blast for it, and, you know, maybe I didn't ride Luke Air or something, this allows you to call four things from Soul instead of just two. Uh, most of the time you just put it behind Vanguard, because, like, hitting 15 is still hitting numbers against force. Hitting 22 is almost numbers against force. So, it's, uh, it's a really solid card. You don't really need more than two. I've seen people try it to one, but I wanted to see it more, so it's a two. Lastly, two copies of Dancing Knife Dancer. So, end phase, you put them in soul. If you have no face-up cards in damage zone, you countercharge. Uh, this allows you to recoup the countercharge you just used to make a board. Um and you're going to use it a lot. Uh, if you cut the one end dive, I recommend putting in either the fourth Rising Dragon or the third Knife Dancer. There's not really a lot of other grade twos that I would recommend running in standard. Um, that thing's pretty much useful any time of the game. Uh, the normal strategy, typically, is you, you call out, uh, you know, a grade one, or like either another attacker and Knife Dancer, or a Knife Dancer and a booster with end dive, and then what am I saying? It's always a booster and knife dancer, because then they just recoup their own cost. So, yeah. Alright. On to the grid ones. You have four copies of Irina. So, um, when placed from hand, you can look at two cards from the top of your deck, put one in the soul and the rest on the bottom. And then when you ride on top of her, you can check top three, put any number of silver thorn cards in the soul, and then put the rest on the bottom. And if you put two or more cards in the soul with that effect, you draw a card. So this is a crazy early game. After that, it just becomes a 10k shield and a, a nice booster. Nothing really to it. Three copies of uh, Silverthorn Conjurer Romy. So her skill is on Rearguard Circle. You can rest her during your main phase and put her into soul. I'm not sure why the resting is part of the effect, because it's not like you're calling things out at rest in Pale Moon. It's just, okay. And then after you do that, you check top three, and then you can put any number of silver thorn cards in the soul and put the rest on the bottom. Um, this is mostly just to kick your kickstart your uh, your soul in the early game, and then uh, later in the game, if you call it out with Lutier or something, I've kind of just kept them in the back as boosters for a while. Um, she's just that important for the early game, though. Three copies of Silverthorn uh, Breathing Dragon, who I noticed that a lot of Silverthorn players run him just for the name and then they don't really use the effect at all. So, his skill is at the end of the battle that he boosted a, a Silverthorn. You can counterblast one, put that card into Soul. if you have four or more Silverthorn names in Soul, of course. And then after you do that, you call a Silverthorn to rear. Uh, this means that in most of the uh, builds I see where you're damage denying them and they're just calling it out and it's like, okay, cool, it's an 8k booster. The reason that, like, I made the build the way it is is that this allows you to turn your uh, your boards into something that you can multi-attack with, with, with without using as many cards. So instead of maybe, all right, I called out, you know, two Rising Dragons and a Lillian onto the front row, and then I have these things in the back, but they're not really doing anything. In this build, it might be a little more aggressive, but it also means that Rising Dragon can use that one Counter Blast that you didn't use for Lutier, to maybe pull off that extra attack, like you put in the Rising Dragon and then call out a Lutier with it and then attack for 22, or 25 in that case if you're sitting on Golden Beast Tamer. 
I just think that this build allows you to utilize this more than you would with just straight up silver thorns. Now, the reason that him and Romy are at three is because I'm running two copies of Softest Perform Marion Marianella. My God, I need glasses. Softest Perform Marianella. So this is a promo we got, I think, in the last like round of shop promos. So her skill is act, you can soul blast one to have her do one of two things. Either the next time she boosts, she stands herself, or she gets plus 3k for the turn. Now, normally, you're not really going to use the stand her after she boosts thing unless you go, alright, I have her and something in front and then Chimera over there. Attack with her, she restands. Attack with Chimera, pull it in. Attack with Beast Tamer, fill the circle you just vacated and now it's a new booster. You're mostly going to use it for that 3k, which uh, seems like a small thing, but as they often say, history turns on small things, and what I mean by that is that makes her 11k, and if you're on Golden Beast Tamer, that's a four, uh, 14k, which means that she now hits force numbers on her own without a booster. That's great. If you do that skill and you're behind a, a grade 2 like, say, Rising Dragon, who's now 19, um, and then Golden Beast Tamer makes it 22... 22 plus 8 is 30. 22 plus 11 is 33, which means you're now hitting numbers on force. This thing won't often be the exact cause of your victory, but it could contribute to it massively. This is like the merchant marines of World War II. They weren't the ones storming the beaches of Normandy, but they were getting the supplies over there so that you could actually, like, you know, prosecute the war against the Nazis. Isn't that fun? You get little... Little history lessons with Atlas. Kill me. Alright, that's the grade ones. Alright, lastly for the grade zeros. So, normally I'm not a fan of rainbow traders. I never was. But here we're doing that. And the reason for this is that both your front trigger and your crit trigger are silver thorns, which means that they contribute to things like Breathing Dragon and uh, Lillian. And uh, Irina, which makes that important to me. Uh, for a while I was doing 5 front, 4 draw, 3 crit, and, uh, I honestly, like, <laughs> I was going back and forth doing 5 crit, doing 5 front, doing 5 draw, just, the rainbow worked out fine. I'm not sure why, but for some reason this just worked out well the way it did. I think it's just something left over from back in the day, where... Background stand triggers were a thing you get trial decks where it was just a rainbow lineup and just nothing felt right. But in this particular case, most of the time, the triggers do what they're supposed to do. Uh, when I say most of the time, the times that they don't work are when I draw a heal off of a draw trigger. Thanks, Hades Hypnotist. But yeah, four heal, four draw PG, four front with Silverthorn, and four crit with Silverthorn. Not much else to it, because this is a standard profile, so I'm just going to show you my uh, my gift markers. So you got Luke here on the front in Excel 2, and you have the Murakumo guy on the back with Excel 1, which you never go into, by the way. Never go into Excel 1. Excel 2 is too good, especially in standard where cards matter a lot more. You got Gauntlet Buster on the front, you got Detonic Drill on the back, you got Huga on the front, and Great Composure on the back. You got... Platina Ezel and Raven Hair. You got this fucking guy and Blonde Ezel and Glory Maelstrom and uh, Tachikaze. D Deathrex. Gigarex. Guy. So that's the build in standard. Um, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.